Oh yeah. Oh boy. All right, Jake. Let's do this thing. Uh, everybody, this is Titans Tube. Of course, I'm Justin. Uh, this is Jake. And getting it done Sunday against the Miami Dolphins, Jake, by a score of 34 to 3. That is a very large margin uh, for, for Titans football. I, I mean, yeah, 30, 31 points. It's rare to see a Titans uh, win on the plus side of 31 points. But, uh, dude, what a game. What a game it was. So much to talk about, uh, not just because the Titans clinched the division for the second time, uh, or their second consecutive time, which is the first time this has happened since yep. 1960 through mm -hmm. 62, back, way back, way, way back in the olden days when life was in black and white. Um, uh, but yeah, and then not on top of that, Jake, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals gifting us a wonderful treat to start off the new year in uh, beating this Kansas City Chiefs. So your Tennessee Titans are the one seed currently, and uh, oh boy, oh boy, Jake, uh, uh, take it away. This the excitement is there's just so much to talk about here. Um, what what a, what a big time day it was for Titans fans on Sunday. Yeah, it was incredible. Justin, obviously, we mentioned it in the preview. We were both at the game. Thank you again for taking me along. Uh, oh, you great my time. hookup on the tickets, so I got to yes. thank him first. Uh, but, Justin, it was an absolute blast. I mean, the weather was terrible, and I couldn't have cared any less. I mean, I had the – I went to Walmart, did the thing. They had the one poncho left, and I got it, and it was awesome. And we were all bundled up. We were good to go, and Titans fans were incredible. Uh, we had two oh, yeah. Dolphins fans next to us, and but, you know, they were incredible as well. Um, yeah. They, they, they were, were good cool. sports through the whole thing. And shout but, out to um, uh, the Titans fans sitting next to us who uh, who I was able to, to – uh, you know, sell tickets to uh, to right next to us. So Jonathan Kelly and I believe his girlfriend uh, was with us. Super cool people as well. We uh, we chatted on Twitter, and uh, yeah, so shout out him. Uh, glad that he was able to go to the game with us as well. Uh, but man, yeah, yeah. Back, back to the it excitement. Was absolute, went. absolutely great time. And you said it. The Titans got the job done on all sides of the ball. It was kind of domination from the start. Even though, yeah, it was a two touchdown lead, I believe, going into half. So it was like. They could blow this in the, but in, you know, in the pouring rain and the freezing winds and rain, I don't think it was going to happen. But it was just a great day overall, and I believe Justin uh, that I had you supporting my hometown team with me in a who day who day who day yeah. gonna beat them Bengals chance that I don't know Guilty. I don't know if more people in our section joined along, but when we started <laughs> getting the Bengals comeback updates. Then, you know, the, the Titans game was at hand. So now everybody was on their phones checking the Kansas City uh, Cincinnati game, obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, an incredible time. I could go on and on and on about it. But but like I said, in weather that bad and when you couldn't care any less that the weather's that bad, it's it's it was a damn good time. So thank you again, Justin, yeah. for taking me. And, and how, how about yeah. those Titans on the field, man? I, I guess we can just start it off with Deontay Foreman. Is this guy yeah. going to play the first name I have written? Uh, man, 26 carries, 132 yards, 5.1 average with one touchdown. Should have been two. I thought he was uh, maybe unfairly marked short there, but didn't matter in the long yeah. run. Looking great. Uh, but it was funny, Justin, at the end of that game, you were saying, stop handing the ball off to Foreman. You're going to ruin his average. And, you know, he has a 5.1 <laughs> yeah. yards per carry average. It would have been even better if it weren't for the Titans just milking the clock for it most was, of yeah. the fourth quarter. It was like over six, I think, going in like late in the fourth quarter. Uh, but what a phenomenal job he's done stepping in for Henry. I, I don't know what he was doing, not on a team or so no one had picked him up or was he on the Falcons practice squad and they he they released him or something at some point he's last bouncing year. bouncing around. Or yeah, this year, I mean, man. But, uh, dude, he's uh, – He's looking good, and I, it seems like he's getting better and, like, faster. Like, he did seem like the big lumbering, you know, just heavy hitter kind of running back. But he's been showing speed, I, in my opinion. Maybe it's just my uh, my viewpoints and my perspective. Maybe I'm a little off here. But he looks, like, faster than he did, like, in the first game that he uh, had with us in replacing Henry. But he seems to be just getting a bigger and bigger head of steam. And now we have Henry coming back, which is all but confirmed at this point. I mean, they're – pretty much expecting him to maybe be back practicing this week. So crazy excitement around all that as well to top it all off. Uh, but th this could be a formidable one-two punch going into the playoffs, uh, keeping both guys fresh. Uh, but, man, just an overall incredible job from Foreman. Uh, he's got, I think, three games over 100 yards rushing. Uh, the rushing attack really hasn't missed a beat. 
And a big time shout out to, to go along with that is the offensive line, obviously Mm -hmm. uh, just generating push for that run attack Mm -hmm. and protecting Tannehill. Uh, This was a good get right game. The the line needed a clean game, uh, a full game. Even they struggled at times against San Francisco, but uh, man, this was, uh, you know, going back to generally speaking, uh, just a complete full team performance that I don't think we've gotten this year uh, for a full four quarters. And even though, like you said, it was 14 to three, in the fourth quarter, not really your typical blowout, just a 14-point lead uh, late in the fourth, but the game felt like a blowout still because, like, mm-hmm. how the special teams was playing. I mean, Brett Kern consistently pinning them deep, and it seemed like every time the Titans got the ball, we were near midfield or on the plus side of the field in Dolphins territory because their punter was struggling, and, yeah, and their offense really couldn't get anything going consist- consistently. So just a complete team effort, even though a 17-3 to isn't a typical blowout. We were dominating this game. And then we got to kind of, I guess, garbage time, a little bit mm-hmm. touchdowns at the end. But uh, uh, yeah, going back again to Deontay Foreman, uh, it's just been a perfect match for him to come right in and just pick up the running game uh, that's been sorely needed. And Hilliard has come in and spots too and done well as well. But uh, yeah, Foreman has got to be your, your player of the game you know, to take away from this Miami game. And we were just saying, we were saying at the game, you know, it's just as soon as we think Hilliard's getting washed out in the rotation and you're seeing more McNichols, who carries the ball? He, he had uh, eight carries, 45 yards, added, I think, 50-plus receiving yards. Uh, he had the one screen pass that was called back for the Chester Rogers uh, illegal crackback block, rough. which was a tough call. I mean, we were there. We, like, we, we it was late. Saw it developed it. The flag was I hate- so late. I just hate how late it was more than anything. Like, oh, those that drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. It was it was tough, tough call, but it's that much worse because he like looked at it, and then you can see it on the highlight. He like finished watching the end of the play, and then he turned around and threw the flag. It was two plus seconds easily yeah. after the foul was committed. Anyway, yeah. sorry, you just triggered me into that. No, that, all good. That call. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, uh, just as soon as we think, uh, you know, Hilliard's getting washed out in this rotation, you don't really see McNichols a whole lot this game. I think he had two carries, 14 yards, which is a nice little burst there, but uh, eight carries for Hilliard just as soon as we think he's, you know, washed away in the rotation. I did want to talk yeah. about Ryan Tannehill, Justin. I thought he played tremendous as a game manager on Sunday. That's all he really needed to be. Uh, we saw it early on in the action that the Titans were kind of, you know, obviously started with the three and out, like what Titans game isn't complete without the Titans beginning the game with a three and out. Uh, so it was <laughs> yeah. kind of punt, punt, like play the, play the field position game a little bit, but Ryan Tannehill, 13 of 18, 120 yards, two touchdowns, obviously statistics that don't blow you out of the water, but I thought his ball to Anthony Ferkser, who got his first touchdown of the year, Justin, yes. how's that for All a right. first down? <laughs> uh, talk about somebody who we think it was washed away for a while. I thought he had yeah. a great ball to Ferkser. I mean, it helped that uh, 86 was wide open in the end zone, but uh, he hit him right yeah. on the numbers, and it was good. I thought it was a good day from Ryan Tannehill. Ball security was great. I don't think the Titans had any turnovers, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah. Miami had two. Zero. And uh, two. Uh, ha, see what I did there. Uh-huh. Uh, but, Justin, uh-huh. you said nice. it, man. Complete team performance. And I just felt in my heart, like, you know, there's always that kind of – beginning moment what was your first clue that it's going to be the titans day or not the titans day and when Tua drops back and throws the ball and it just stays on his back you know <laughs> like yeah. his hand in the rain and the titans recover i believe molden was the eventual titan who got on that ball i was like yeah this might be the titans day because we've seen yeah. plenty where maybe ryan tano doesn't do exactly that but we see a play that's as ugly as that and we're thinking oh geez so uh, like I said, the Dolphins fans next to us were great sports. I might have been giving them a little bit of a harder time than you, Justin, <laughs> but uh, they were good yeah. sports about it. No, but yeah, they were cool. Uh, yeah, and about Tua, he definitely looked like a quarterback that had never played in, like, wet, rainy conditions before. And, I mean, you know, being from Hawaii and then playing your football all in the Southeastern Conference, mm-hmm. so how many cold, wet, rainy day games has he ever played in? I don't know. I don't know if that had been discussed or talked about at all, but he looked like a quarterback uncomfortable and the Titans definitely took advantage of that mistake. He was, he, yeah, he certain like, I don't think I'm not ready. If I'm a Dolphins fan, I'm not ready to completely move on from Tua yet, but he was definitely holding the Dolphins team back more so than any other player for the Dolphins. He might've been more of the reason that y'all lost than anything, but 
I mean, the Titans came in and played a, a fantastic game themselves. I think we would have been a tough team to beat for anybody, just the way mm-hmm. we looked prepared and executed and just controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, but going back to Tannehill, I did want to say one thing about him that I have written down. Um, you see, like, how effective he is. It's, I don't know, this is maybe kind of a counterintuitive statement, but, like, how deadly and effective he is when he's not required to do too much, when he has a defense that Mm -hmm. is consistently getting stops, getting him the ball back when he can lean on a running game, that's whenever he can be like extremely killer. And I think the best example of that was in that 2019 Ravens playoff game when Henry was running like crazy. Uh, The defense was shutting down Lamar, but Tannehill threw some daggers and like to Khalif Raymond and he was clutch Mm -hmm. running the ball and he threw that first touchdown to John New, like he will destroy you whenever he has just a little bit of help around him. And I thought we saw some of that today. Yeah, just through five incompletions, uh, only 120 yards, though, on 13 completions. But, yeah, no turnovers. He's not hurting us in any way whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, when he gets help, like, that's when he's at his best, which should be true for, yeah. I guess, that should be your basic always true statement. But I think it's especially true for Tannehill. He will not lose you a game whenever he's getting help from uh, other aspects of the football team. Uh, so, yeah, Ryan Tannehill did what we've been used to seeing him doing for sure in this game. Uh, but if you have nothing left to talk about the offense, Jake, I mean, this defense, oh, oh my goodness, it's it's ready, dude. It's championship ready football for the defense, man. Like, uh, this front four is just outstanding. Uh, we'll see. I don't think we're going to be reduced to the front three because of whatever's going on with Bud Dupree here. Um I think it's going to be a nothing burger, though. Uh, just uh, fingers crossed. But uh, but regardless, dude, though, again, four sacks for the defense in this game, which totals to 41 sacks on the season, wow. up from 19 a season wow. ago. And that's it's over just, double. Yeah. Yeah. It's night and day. It's night and day how this defense looks from last year. And I mean, that's the most glaring stat change there is the number of sacks that this defense is getting. Uh, just makes life easier for the entire unit. So um, can't say enough. This this defense is like fun to watch. Like even if the offense was stalling and having to punt the ball back, it's like, dude, I can't wait to get after Tua and to see him running for his life again. This is, this is fun. This is more fun to watch than the conservative play calling from downing type of offense that can get a little boring a little bit here and there, but no, but this defense though, that's what we're here to talk about. This is, I mean, talking about Foreman stepping up when Henry went down, I think what's helped the Titans win without Henry is I think the defense has stepped up. I mean, you saw them at the beginning of the year, giving up 38 to the Cardinals. They gave up some huge plays to the Seahawks where the Titans had to rally in the second half there. This defense has definitely gotten way better since the beginning of the year. And they're still getting better. We're getting healthier. We got David Long Jr. back and boom, he, he plays well. He makes a splash play in the right place on a tip ball. He gets a late interception. So Dude, that this defense is starting to fire on all cylinders, and uh, yeah, this is this could be what carries us to a, a Super Bowl run here. Uh, knock on wood. Hopefully, this this uh, didn't curse us there. But anyway, Jake, I mean, what what is there to say about this defense? Another fantastic performance. Yeah, I love what you said. How sometimes the defense is more fun to watch than the offense. That's kind of the Derrick Henry effect. Once twenty two is back in the game, <laughs> we're going to be excited yeah. to see that right. again. But but unbelievable turnaround from the defense. Shane Bowen, I already gave you a bouquet of flowers and a formal apology on video, put it on the internet for everybody to see. And I'll do it a second time because I am Mm -hmm. very much with you, Justin, this defense is playoff ready. I think they're championship ready. And speaking of those Cincinnati Bengals, I had a little dust up text exchange with a Bengals fan friend of mine. And he was like, Oh, I hope, I hope the Bengals get the Titans in the playoffs. You know, their defense is bad. You saw it last year in Cincinnati. I said, oh, this is a completely <laughs> different defense. And I don't think people yeah. realize that. I mean, I guess we're kind of transitioning into the looking ahead aspect. But as the Titans sit in the number one seed, all they have to do is beat the four and 11 or maybe four and 12 now Houston Texans. Uh, all That's all they have to do to, to lock in the first round by. And, you know, you're seeing everything on Twitter like, Oh, this is the worst number one seed ever. Oh my God. Yeah, and it's the Titans and it's all this, whatever. I don't care. But anyways, this, this Bengals friend, friend of mine said, Oh, their defense is bad. Joe Burrow and Jamar chase are going to shred them. You saw it last year. And I think that's why the Titans are sneaking up on people, Justin, or that's why people doubt the Titans. Yes. It's the logo. You know, it's kind of like it's been a symbol of mediocrity throughout 
the you know mid to late 21st century as as we've come out of this rebuild and yeah. uh they they see it and they think nine and seven they think uh Derek Henry's your whole team you don't have much yeah. but this Titans defense dude and what Shane Bowen has done and what John Robinson did going out and getting Bud Dupree you know getting Zach Cunningham who luckily fell to us on waivers who's been making a tremendous impact and then it's just robinson draft picks from there dude it's kevin oh, yeah. byard it's hooker it's christian fulton it's david Long. the entire the entire 2019 draft class with yeah. simmons and brown yeah jeffrey and, simmons and david long jr and uh, all in one class yeah yeah we yeah That's under the radar good. have just assembled a defensive unit full of studs at all levels. It's, Mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing. And in the fallback, like excuse maybe for the Titans, uh, you know, and why people aren't taking them seriously is low. Look at their losses. Uh, You know, we lost to the jets, lost to the Steelers ugly, but it was like, dude, our defense though, our defense dominated. And they're kind of maybe missing that part of it is, is how good this defense is because sometimes in games, our offense will put the ball on the ground and, unimaginable amount of times uh gifting the other team points and so yeah even though they gave up 19 points to the Steelers they completely shut them down on a way much more improving or a much better level than that sorry I couldn't Mm -hmm. couldn't speak for a second I was with you I was with uh, you but but, yeah thank you but the, the defense has has just been so dominant of late that I don't think anybody can start to overlook this now yeah it's crazy I mean I don't know Maybe your Bengals friend hasn't watched a Titans game this year, but I mean, this has been a thing going since even back in Buffalo. I mean, we had the fourth down stop, even though they gave up 31 points, which is a lot. I thought the Mm -hmm. defense played a pretty decent game against Buffalo. And then we saw what happened from there against the Chiefs and then against the Rams. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, the Stevens has been playing well and carrying us, I think, uh, in, uh, in spite of the loss of Derrick Henry. So, yeah. Um, yeah, as, as long as they keep rolling like this, I mean, yeah, we have to be taken seriously. And it's, I don't know, it is funny seeing all the takes about the worst one seed ever. I've even seen some power rankings now where we're like barely cracking top 10. And dude, it's hilarious. It's honestly just funny at this point. Well, we will be, if we win the Super Bowl, we'll be the first team to be like ranked five uh, yeah. as Super Bowl <laughs> champions, like heading into the offseason. They'll make up some stories like, oh, okay, I don't think they can retain this player. And, um, <laughs> This person's gone, and Henry, can he stay healthy? I don't know. They're going to drop off. We'll just put him at five, Super Bowl champion yeah. type. Uh, anyway, and, you know, yeah. to, to put a bow on that uh, little snippet, you know, my little tirade there, Bengals fans should be the last fans in the entire NFL talking about who they want in the playoffs. So, you know, they had five losses in a row. They haven't won a playoff game in 30 wow. years. So, you wow. know. Yeah, I, we were riding with you on Sunday, Bengals fans, but but uh, that one in particular, don't give us that disrespect. Hey, I would love, you know, as, as much as there might be a, a mini little love fest going on with Titans fans for, for the Bengals, for the big favor mm-hmm. they did us. I'm holding off on that until the season's over. Um, I mean, if, if the Titans do go on to the Super Bowl and God willing win the Super Bowl, yeah, we can come back and be like forever, forever grateful. You know, if we get to host the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game and win a really close one, uh, then, yeah, we can look back and give all the Bengals the fanfare and love. Uh, but if they come to Nissan Stadium in a playoff matchup and Joe Burrow tosses the ball all over the yard and does beat this team, then no. No, I yeah, I'm not going to have any love for the Bengals. So I'm holding off. I mean, we're grateful now. But if this Bengals team, I mean, I don't know if I want to face the Bengals. I mean, yeah, I know they're a new Fresh face team, a lot, a lot of green boys mm-hmm. with no playoff experience, a lot of young players, but oh, Jamar Chase, the, ever, all those receivers, so dangerous, dude. I mean, I'm, I don't know this. There, there's so little parity, or there's a lot of parity. No, what was yes. not a lot, a lot of, of parity, a lot of parity in the AFC, mm-hmm. where I don't know if I. Yeah, we, we shouldn't feel confident about facing any team. We can beat any team in this playoff field, but I feel like we could also lose to any of this, these teams in this playoff field at the same time. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, that's why, you know, getting the one seed and home field advantage is going to be so much uh, so much more important uh, for this team. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're there. I think we should be taken seriously. I mean, this is the first – I mean, I've kind of said this before, but this is the first, like, fully dominant – game from the titans and it reflects what we saw on the field and the scoreboard and i think that's what Mm -hmm. catches people's attention 
people that don't watch games, the national media. I mean, they kind of just look at the bottom line. It's like, okay, Titans finally it seems like they dominated the game instead of barely squeaking by. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, San Francisco was a good home win, but how flat we were on offense in the first half. I mean, you can pick out flaws in all, almost all of our Titans wins probably, but this one, you can't really find any flaws. And I think that's what people want to see, and that's what you want to see from your team um, during this home stretch heading into the playoffs. So I think this is the game. Uh, I mean, we're facing a def- desperate Dolphins team you know, who I think if they had won their final two games, they were in control of their own destiny to clinch a playoff berth. And the Titans just came out and smacked them. So, uh, yeah, having seen that, I think we should have risen some eyebrows around the league with with this performance and with the whole Henry coming back storyline. So, uh, again, another tirade, Jake. I'm on a tirade yes. tir- no, kind dude. of day for me. It's, it was that kind of Sunday, you know. There's so yeah. much as a Titans fan to be excited about, especially being at full position in the one seed. That is optimal. I don't know if you bring Derrick Henry back for the Houston game. I mean, uh, we're, we're in no position to take the Houston Texans lightly, Justin. The Titans have already right. lost to this football team earlier in the season. I don't care what their record is. I don't care what the stigma against the Texans are. I don't care if they have their bags packed for the Bahamas already waiting for them in the locker room. The Titans have to go out and take care of business in Houston. But now, now that you've won and now that you've climbed your way back up to this spot, it's not for the AFC South. You know, you got that bundled up. And also, shout out to the Las Vegas Raiders. It's been kind of a Bengals love fest in this oh, episode. Yeah. But shout out to the Raiders for also uh, doing more dirty work. And just that extra punch to the Indianapolis Colts really made Sunday that much more special. Yes. Uh, but anyways... Well, the Titans have positioned themselves to where they just take care of business and you get a week off. The Titans are already becoming an incredibly healthy football team after being injured in COVID all year long, Justin. It seemed like all year long our injury report was two pages of an Excel doc, you know. But uh, they're getting healthy at the right time and an extra week off is going to be incredible. And not having to win three games to get to the Super Bowl and having just to win two games, Justin, that's massive. You go out and you win your first game at home after a bye week, you're in the AFC Championship game just like that. I mean, and obviously the Titans can go out and lose in the divisional. We're not, that's, you know, we don't want to even bring that up, knock on wood. But uh-huh. it's, uh, yes. it's unbelievable how important that one single bye week, you know, with the 17 playoff format, only one team gets the bye, and how crucial and how important that is. I think the stat is like 15 out of the last 16 Super Bowl participants got there with the bye. And yeah. so when you see things like that, it, it shows how paramount it is to get that one seed and unbelievable, unbelievable. One of my favorite underrated moments, Justin, on Sunday had nothing to do with with the Titans game. I was waiting in line for the bathroom. The Titans game had concluded. And this just random old guy comes up with his phone. And he's like, Bengals just won. And <laughs> within two seconds, the bathroom TV, like I was outside the bathroom and you heard the bathroom erupt and everybody went nuts. And he goes, I told you. I told you they won. So it was just, it was was a early, early scoop by about uh, two or three seconds, but (laughs) it's, it's unbelievable what Mike Vrabel has done with this crew. I mean, obviously you bring up the setting the NFL record for most players dressed in an entire season. That is incredible. If you look at the next two, three, four, five teams on that list, they have losing records, Justin. And I'm talking about two and 14s and, four and 12s and five and 11s. It's not, you know, winning 11 games, hopefully 12 and being the one seed in your conference. It's unbelievable. And I think if Mike Vrabel does not win coach of the year, getting this team to a one seed, I don't know what else he can do, Justin, besides do it again next year, I guess. And Mm -hmm. and that just shows you how much the national narrative dismisses the Titans. If Mike Vrabel does not win. He just needs to do it. He needs to do it for another team. That's not the Titans. Cause like you said, the Titans don't get the attention and, and, and the talk around the, yeah, nationally. So I, I, I completely agree. What, what he's been able to do uh weathering the storm and it's funny how things can change because we could be going into the playoffs and looking across the sideline and now our opponents are the ones that are the injured ones and we're the healthy ones going yeah. in and, and now we're the one seed at at full strength and so it's, it's crazy that we are in this position with all these the rotation of players that that we've been uh bringing in and out and not just Vrabel it's as much credit's got to go to John Robinson because he's mm-hmm. building the roster he builds the depth he finds these guys Deontay Foreman 
in particular. And uh, Chester Rogers, you know, in the offseason, he's come around and been pretty decent in spots. So I thought he had a good uh, a good game fielding punts yesterday, uh, even even uh, with the uh, Polardi, that was their punter's name, Polardi, yeah. uh, shanking a couple punts, it seems like. And Rogers still took full advantage, catching those punts and still gaining yards uh, out of shorter than expected punts and he comes up with one or two uh third down conversion catches yesterday too so uh yeah just john robinson and just his ability to yes he has some draft misses and uh no 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 first round picks really from the last <laughs> two drafts with the isaiah wilson and caleb farley tearing his acl but uh it's just next man up plug and play kind of mentality for this team so yeah mike Vrabel or john robinson executive of the year coach of the year we got Somebody get home one of these yeah. uh, to one of our guys here because this this uh, this stuff is unprecedented what they've been accomplishing. Um, and so real quick, I wanted to throw it to you uh, the hypothetical with Derrick Henry here. So would you, uh, knowing that if we win against the Texans and get in uh, get that one seed, would you dress Henry in case this game gets a little dicey? And I don't know, does he bring something that maybe you don't think you? you should be able to get out of Foreman and the other guys uh, with our running attack, or is it just better to play it safe and, or, or how much of a rust factor do you buy into? And does him getting hit knocked around a little bit, does that help him get back into football shape, football speed, I guess, or does a King not need to trifle with such, with such little things? Yes. Uh, It's, it's tough for me, Justin. I've been on one side where it's just shelve them if we get the one seed, you know, and, but now it's coming down to the week 17 thing. I I guess it matters to those inside of the building who know, is he healthy? Is he ready to go? How does he look running? Is he, is he like medically cleared? Is he uh, looking good in practice? You know, if he does, then I think you play him for a couple of plays. I don't think you do the break glass in case of emergency kind of thing, because what are you going to ask Derek Henry to do on a hampered foot that, yeah, like you said, Deontay Foreman is not going to do for you. I mean, obviously Derek Henry is a game changer. I'm not trying to compare having Deontay Foreman in the ball game versus number 22, Derek Henry. It's not right. even the same uh, stratosphere, but when it comes to playing the Houston Texans, when it comes to like a take care of business kind of game, uh, I'm more of the, you know, if he's healthy, get him in there and get him tackled a couple of times just so he can bounce up and be like, all right, like, let's do it. You know, like I, I buy into that. I don't know how true that is because I'm not an NFL player and I've never been tackled or hit by one. And I hope not to, um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I, it's, it's more of a, I trust the process. I trust Mike Brable in being that guy who's not going to send him out there if he's injured a uh, shot across the bow at Bruce Arians and the Antonio Brown uh, oh my God. that happened on Sunday. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But I, I believe in this front office and the way that they, they handle injuries. I mean, you can look at, you know, like a Dory Jackson or Julio Jones this year. You know, if a player isn't ready to go, they're not going to force him out there. And they're sure as hell not going to force out their entire franchise player uh, yeah. to go try and lock up a one C they don't necessarily need. Uh, obviously you really, really, really want it, but you don't have to have it because you've locked up the AFC South. Yeah. Um, I'm more in the aspect of go get them knocked around like two or three plays and then shell them. Yeah. But you know, that's, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be on pins and needles if he's in. I'll be like, <laughs> oh my God, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. I mean, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like with you. Cause we, yeah, his last snap, of football it was against the Colts, I think on Halloween, October 31st. And so if his first action, even if we get the bye, is in the divisional round and say we got the Bills or the Patriots coming to Nashville and they've been they've been humming for the past couple months, all this time while he's been rehabbing and now they're in playoff speed. They've already played a game. And so they're ready to go 100%. And he gets his first carry in months. Um, I'm not saying he's not going to get acclimated as the game goes on, but it could take him three, four, five plays or getting hit a few times to, to get that speed back up. And I don't know, it's the playoffs. Every play counts and matters because that's your season. And, and I mean, I, w- I would almost rather have a Henry that's, you know, mentally and ready uh, more so. And if, if that takes getting him the ball a few times against the Texans, then I, I'm all for it. And he's shown that durability, dude. It's not like having Mario to come in here to take a few snaps and for him to get hit and like be kind of afraid. Oh shoot. He could have, he could get injured yeah. at any second. Henry doesn't do that. This was kind of a freak 
injury, it, it seems like, to his foot. So hopefully he'll be good to go and he can take a few hits before uh, before the playoffs start. But uh, so he can be ready. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, don't know. I, was, I was just want your take on that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll lend to that. Justin Derrick Henry is a superhuman. I, I, I don't like using the word freak because it sounds mean, but it is dude's a super <laughs> freak. I, he's built like a brick house and he's faster than all get out. And it, it's unbelievable, uh, you know, not to talk about his body or anything like that, but like, it, Please do, it's, he's completely built different. I, you know, that phrase built different Derrick Henry is like the dictionary picture a built different because he just is you just <laughs> yeah. look at him you watch him play football for one game and you're like that dude's that dude's way different and so maybe he can come straight into a divisional round playoff game and have that speed I don't doubt that from him I really don't but it's more it might be more of a fan perspective to want to see him carry the ball a couple of times before yeah. like you said it really does matter snap to snap I mean as, as a fan it, myself and as a fan of seeing like uh, you know uh, some good stats with you know some of our players i would like to see a, just one carry for i believe 63 yards is what he needs to eclipse 1000 for the season oh yeah i mean a thousand for the season is still in reach if he does suit it up on sunday 63 yards he gets that in his sleep mo most times than not uh you know just just to keep the the streak going you know i, I like looking at uh, career stats season by mm -hmm. season and just seeing thousands and then that 2,000 and then more thousands, you know, down the list. I mean, that's that's what really looks good on a Hall of Fame resume. If yeah. you uh, catch my drift on our hopeful yeah. future Hall of Famer. I mean, dude, if he comes back and he just goes on a tear through the playoffs and we go to the Super Bowl. Oh, Hall of, Hall of Fame status on the on the menu for sure for this guy. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I'm, I'm getting dude. Just look at what a 34 to three. <laughs> when late season <laughs> turns this into i mean i'm just on cloud nine first seed is it within reach we're getting back the franchise i mean dude uh oh, i'm having a good time being a titans fan and boy what what a difference it was two weeks ago after we lost to the steelers and then the mm -hmm. getting blown out by the patriots and dude but now we are getting healthier we are showing domination on in all three phases of the game finally uh against a the mediocre to pretty good team in the Dolphins I think they're pretty good if you're a Dolphins fan listening I mean hey Tua had a rough game I mean you hopefully you know you can just talk chalk it up to Tua having a bad game and bad weather conditions uh but there's a lot there there's a lot there to work with I mean they had they won 10 games last year so I think what's doomed them this year was the slow start to the season and they just finally built momentum and strung together this win streak uh, too late but I mean yeah they're, they're, they've got pieces there so there's you know I think this is a this is a good win. It's not like we just beat Jackson. We couldn't even beat Jacksonville thirty four three. Yes. We had to beat them twenty to to zero. So this is a much better performance all around for the Titans against a good a pretty good team in the Dolphins. So that, yeah, that's I, good to see. Yeah, and it was a high stakes game. It had big playoff yeah. implications, if I can say the word, Justin. And yeah, uh, Dolphins fans, I I wouldn't throw it all away yet. Like you said, Justin, they won ten games last year. Uh, you know, if not for a seven game losing streak, you would have been probably in the playoffs this year. It's hard to <laughs> win. It's hard. It's hard to lose seven games in a row in the NFL and still yeah. go to the playoffs. And the Dolphins still almost did it. So I wouldn't blow it all up immediately. Um, it was just uh, also, I think I said it in the picks video, but the Dolphins now moved to one and 12 in their last 13 games below 50 degrees. So it's kind of a fish out of water thing. We were talking about to a, uh, earlier about, you know, he played in Hawaii, went to Alabama, never really played cold weather games. Um, yeah. Not that I'm saying the Titans haven't had their fair share of slip ups in cold weather games, but Justin, it is exciting times to be a Titans fan. Uh, all feels good in the kingdom right now, oh, especially the with the King returning. I love it. Like see yeah. what I did there. Um, but it's, it's all about perspective. Let's just enjoy next week. If win or lose, uh, we are proud fans no matter what. It's unbelievable that we've wrapped up the South in the way that we did this year uh, with all the injuries, all the turmoil, all the ups and downs that we've had, uh, you know, losing to the Jets week four and then losing that Houston game in the rain, Justin. It was uh, miserable. And then, yeah, obviously the Patriots beat down and the Titans can't hold on to the football, but now they're holding on to the football. And guess what? They're winning games. So uh, six oh, consecutive winning seasons back-to-back -back AFC South 
championships. Uh, you're going to your third playoff appearance in Mike Rabel's four years as a head coach. Times yep. are good, man. Times are good, Titans fans. Uh, just remember that Definitely throughout uh, this month of January. And, and we'll just see what happens, man. The sky is the yeah. limit. All you got to do is beat Houston, and then it's two games to the big one. You know, I got so excited yes. I nudged my laptop. I, I, hey, I can't blame you. Speaking of the skies, dude, that's, uh, dude, it's, it is, it's like poetic. On, on the very night that the Titans clinched the division for the second year in a row, it snows, dude. The snowfall came down several inches, which is not a not very common thing in, in Nashville. Um, and we woke up to uh, we woke up to winter, Jake. Winter yes. is coming for Nashville. We are playoff ready here. We the snows are falling. Uh, the king is returning, and uh, I think it's a sign. It's a sign that uh, it's our time. It's our year. It is. We are here. <laughs> to win it all again 34 to 3 and i am all all hands on deck ready for a super bowl championship uh we're excited here at titans tube okay i mean very you laid it out perfectly six winning seasons uh three playoff appearances um in in mike Vrabel's uh, tenure here and we have like one of the longest streaks of consecutive winning seasons i think we're third behind uh pittsburgh and kansas city or non-losing seasons. I think Pittsburgh yeah. finished 500 or something, something dumb like that. But, dude, this is a winning franchise, winning tradition now uh, that they've built here. John Robinson, Amy, Adam, Strunk, and Mike Vrabel are the truth. They should all be inducted into the ring of honor once they once they bring home this championship, Jake. I'm here for yes. it. Everybody get excited. Uh, <laughs> fingers crossed we're not going to have a let down for Houston. Please, please don't destroy this, this, uh, this big this time. Happiness. Big time this happiness. Yeah, and yeah. we'll have it for the next two weeks if we beat Houston, Justin. We're going to have uh, this giddiness and smiles across our faces for two weeks. I believe January 23rd is the weekend uh, of the divisional round playoff game. So, Man. wow, wow, playoffs wow. That's late. Yeah. Well, yeah, playoffs, yeah. Playoffs, yeah gotta, I guess they're all, pushed, they're all pushed back now because of the extra uh, uh, week now, regular season game. But, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think I that, that is going to do it for us, Justin. Yeah, is it? I was thinking yeah. the same thing. I think we're, we'll call it here. I did want to bring up the joke. You brought up Amy Adams Strunk. I mean, she deserves also all the credit in the world. You think back to 2013, 2014, Bud Adams dies, and this franchise is in absolute disarray. I mean, the ownership doesn't know what they're doing. Their head coach is Ken freaking Wisenhunt, for God's sake. <laughs> this team is winning two games. And, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the daughter of Bud Adams says, you know what? I'll take this team and whip them into shape. And that she did, you know, it's yeah. unbelievable yeah. what she has yeah. done. And I saw the joke way earlier in the season, right when the Titans started flirting with the one seed, Justin, and it's uh, the hot seat is on Amy Adams, because especially if the Titans do win the Super Bowl, they set the record for most players dress. That's a lot of Super Bowl rings. You got to buy oh, yeah. as Amy Adams strunk. That is a big purchase. Uh, even, even for a, you know, billionaire heiress of, uh, of an NFL team. Uh, so, uh, love Amy Adams trunk, love John Robinson, love Mike Brable, love this Titans team, Justin, let's go, let's, let's Ooh. go take care of business in Houston, tighten up. Let's go get that one seed like comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Justin, thank you again for taking yes. me the game on Sunday. Absolute pleasure blast. and tighten Funnest up game yet. Oh yeah. Yes. Perfect. Tighten up.